When done properly, Scott Aerator 3-Wire Motor Splice Kits provide a watertight connection for repairing or extending your power cord. In this video, we will demonstrate step-by-step -step instructions how to achieve a safe and secure splice. Before you begin, gather these tools and supplies. Begin by trimming both the wires from the motor and the new cable to create an even splice. Remove 3 inches from the outer blue sheathing on the new cable. Use caution not to cut into the inner wires and always cut out and away from your hand to avoid injury. Peel the first wire away and continue with wire strippers to trim remaining sheathing. Your three wire motor will have two black wires and one green and yellow wire. Your new cable will have a green wire and yellow wire and a black wire. Sometimes the yellow is tinted slightly green from the outer blue covering. It's important to remember the dark green is connected to the yellow and green wire from your motor and the remaining two wires can connect in any order. Using wire strippers, strip each wire 5 eighths to expose the copper. We're using 10 gauge wire in this video, so use the 10 gauge hole marked on your wire stripper. Simply crimp down and pull to remove the outer layer. Next. Twist each wire to make it easier to slide into the butt splicers. Butt splicers are notched to indicate crimping direction. Insert and hold each wire from your motor firmly in the butt splicer. Notch side up, align the crimper to crimp downward, and squeeze firmly. Begin by crimping all of the wires from the motor Crimp near the edge of the splicer, only on the side of the inserted wire. You may have an all-in-one crimping and stripping tool, which will work just as well. It is important to pull on each splice to ensure you have a strong connection. Once all three splices have been attached to the three motor wires, slide a small clear heat shrink over each wire and temporarily pull them away from the splice. On the new cable, slide the large yellow shrink tube on first, then the large clear shrink tube second, and push back along the cable far enough to keep it from coming in contact with the heat gun in the next steps. Finish crimping the splicers to each wire starting with a green to green. Insert the copper all the way in and crimp downward with the notch side facing up. It's okay if a few strands slip outside of the splice. If you have excess wire protruding, trim using side cutters. Slide and center the small clear heat shrink tubes over each splice. Use a heat gun and begin working from the center and slowly move into the ends, rotating the wire to heat all sides evenly. Heat long enough to achieve a tight seal, but not burn the tubing.
Small air pockets can be lightly pressed out with your finger. Once the three connections are complete, wrap with a single layer of electrical tape, starting three inches from one end and continuing three inches past the other end. Here, it's important to keep the spliced wires tight and circular to allow for the larger shrink tubes to fit over. Slide and center the clear shrink tube over the splice. Use the heat gun and slowly work from the center outward rotating the wire to evenly heat until all air pockets are gone. Tap with your finger to remove any remaining bubbles. When you get to the loose wires on the motor side, back the heat gun away to keep from burning the wires and damaging them. Slide the remaining yellow shrink tube over the splice. Heat from the center outward until sealed. Keep the splice straight while cooling, and your new cable is now ready for use.